presence of God and uh, for this evening's uh, service praise the Lord and uh, we give God all the glory we give him all the praise he that has enabled us once again to be standing in his presence hallelujah We'd love to start off by honoring and uh, celebrating the vision bearer our mother prophetess Emmanuel Agnes of Vako. hallelujah we honor and celebrate the grace of God upon our life and uh, we also honor and celebrate the grace of God upon the assistant pastors Pastor Robert Romala and Pastor Helen <laughs> Hallelujah we honor and celebrate the grace of God upon Pastor Sarah Pastor Joan we honor and celebrate Pastor Martin Pastor Brian Pastor Grace Mpologoma Hallelujah we want to celebrate uh, Evangelist Odi, uh, Minister Jacobs, praise the Lord, Minister CEO, Minister Maureen, and all the other ministers in your various capacities. We want to celebrate the grace of God upon your lives, praise the Lord. And uh, we also want to celebrate the grace of God upon uh, our spiritual grandparents, our covering prophetess Miriam Obina and uh, Bishop Paul Chukwemo, hallelujah. We honor and celebrate the grace of God upon their lives. And above all, we honor and celebrate the Spirit of God who has uh, brought us here, praise the Lord. And he is the essence of our communion, the essence of our worship, praise the Lord. And to him be all the praise and all the glory. Let's sum ourselves and pray. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, we humble ourselves before you, Lord, this evening as uh, we rededicate ourselves into your presence, O God. We ask, O oh Lord, my God, that you make your presence known in this place, O God. Come and take away our limitations. Come and take away our infirmities, O God. And Father, Lord, let your grace, O God, be revealed in this place, Abba Father. In Jesus' mighty name, for Lord, we cannot do it on our own. We cannot do it with our own strength, Lord. But Father, Lord, let your name be glorified, O God. Let your name be praised, Abba Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father, Lord, we activate the ministry of angels, Father, in this place, O God. And we speak the blood of Jesus over the heavens in this place over the land of God and over the seas of God in Jesus' mighty name as we take dominion Father Lord over the heavens over the land and over the seas of God in Jesus' mighty name to re-establish your kingdom O God in the name of Jesus Christ Father Lord when all is done Father we shall give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, you may have your wonderful seats uh, briefly and then. Uh, Hallelujah. We are in a week of uh, another week of revival, another week of uh, seeking the Lord. Praise the Lord. And uh, the theme of this week is uh, it is a prophetic theme, and uh, it was God who says it's God who says that uh, His presence shall go with us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so we thank God for yet another wonderful time in His presence. Hallelujah. And. Uh, Tonight, I just want to talk about seeking the presence of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Seeking the presence of the Lord. Because uh, right, from, uh, right from the other day, we have been looking at the fact that uh, it is God's plan, it is God's desire that uh, His people may dwell continuously in His presence. Praise the Lord. And uh, without the presence of the Lord, we cannot do anything. Praise the Lord. And uh, right from the beginning of the of, uh, of of the world, right from the beginning of the world of creation, praise the Lord. We see that a man dwelt in the presence of the Lord, and uh, it is uh, as I've said that it is God's desire that uh, we may. 
dwell in his presence that we may operate in his presence as a matter of fact the bible says that uh, in his in him we live we move and have our being praise the lord meaning that uh, it is god's desire that we may dwell praise the lord that we may dwell in his presence and we may operate in his presence but uh, as uh, man continues to live on the face of the earth we tend to find ourselves entangled with so many activities and so many things that uh, take away that robust from uh, that robust of the, 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 the privilege that we have been given which is to dwell in the presence of God and so you discover that uh, we attend we tend to be caught up in our busy lives in our daily endeavors praise the Lord much as even some of it might look like as though it is ministry hallelujah it may it may look like as though it is ministry but uh, we neglect the essence of whatever we are doing because god god is the essence god is the is the is the reason as to why we are doing whatever we are doing and so if we are doing it out of his presence then uh, it tends to become a duty hallelujah because uh, you have seen like uh, yesterday i said that uh, that uh, it is uh, most of the times we tend to confuse uh, operating in the gifts with uh, someone having the presence of god and i said that uh, a gift it is very possible to operate in a gift be it prophetic be it the gift of faith and uh, so many people actually uh, flock to so many gatherings just because uh, uh, maybe the prophet is doing what he's prophesying deeply just because that uh, this man here is operating in the gifts of the spirit praise the lord and uh, we associate that to be the presence of god which is not true because uh, it is one thing the bible says that uh, you can desire the gifts and uh, you can desire the gift and start plateauing to a dimension whereby you operate in that gift at will whether god is there or not praise the lord we have seen so many people that operate in the gift of the prophetic and then uh, the people that watch this person here uh, go and say oh this person here has god and yet this person here after operating in the gift he's either going to do and i think even pastor helen mentioned it yesterday this person here after operating in the gift this person will start going to do dubious things doing things that are not in line with the character of god meaning that are operating someone operating in the gift does not show that this person here is working with the presence of god praise the lord hallelujah and I gave an example yesterday of a certain prophet who was operating in deep forensic prophecy. And after operating in prophecy, then he goes to the hotel and then uh, sleeps with women. Praise the Lord. So let's not associate operating in the gifts with uh, walking with the presence of God. Praise the Lord. Because it is very different. It is very different. You cannot associate, yes, much as God might walk with someone in the beginning stages of life, but then that person there, whether he's going to continue, the texture or the, 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 the fragrance, the freshness of the presence is dependent on what that person there, that vessel is doing. Praise the Lord. Because uh, you, just because, as I've said, just because you're operating in the gifts of the Spirit, and most of the times, uh, you look at uh, these ministers here because I'm a, an ardent follower of uh, men of God. I like watching men of God. And you will see that uh, this man of God can uh, maybe, have, maybe be working in a gift. And then they reach a point whereby they become too busy. They become too committed to the ministry and forget about the source and the sustainer of that ministry. Praise the Lord. Someone can be doing even ministry. It looks like as though you are ministering. It looks like as though you are serving God. But as long as you've missed that connection with him, then it becomes a duty. Praise the Lord. It becomes a duty. And what happens is that uh, because uh, one thing I've learned about God is that uh, he does not uh, disqualify us for failure to yield to him uh, publicly but it disqualifies us for failure to yield to him privately 
this is what the Bible says in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 7 and verse uh, if you read Matthew chapter 7 from verse 21 many came unto the Lord and said Lord we prophesied in your name you see where ministry is praise the Lord we prophesied in your name we healed the sick in your name we we did what we, we preached in your name and then the Lord stands and says that depart from me you workers of iniquity why because I never knew you I never knew you in the place of my presence in the secret place praise the Lord so it is one thing to serve God and it is another thing to maintain the word to maintain intimacy with him hallelujah it is another thing to maintain that connection that communion with him because you have seen so many people on TV and you yourself you can attest to the fact that these people here at some point walked with the presence of God they walked in the freshness of the presence of God that some gospel artists that you listen to right now and back then these people here you just listen to one song of this person here and you would connect immediately but all of a sudden this person here comes and sings and nothing happens we have we have seen preachers on TV and then you just all of a sudden you just judge that this person here there is something missing and that is the presence of God much as he's preaching much as he's ministering praise the Lord so what happens is that we are like Samson the Bible says in Judges chapter 16 that Samson continuously continued doing what sleeping with the women and he thought that he would come and show up. He would just come shake himself and God would show up. But the Bible says the last shaking in Judges chapter 16 and verse 20. The last shaking, he, could, he shook and uh, he never knew that the Lord had departed. Praise the Lord. So we are in a generation whereby there are so many ministers. There are so many ministries that are still ministering. They are still communing. They are still gathering. They are still singing songs of praises and worship. But the presence has departed. Praise the Lord. The presence has departed. And I've learned about God that when he is coming unto you, maybe he can announce his arrival. But his, his, his departure, he, he may never announce it. Because you will keep on doing the same thing. You will keep on ministering. You will keep on gathering. And you may never know when he departed. And it might take you even a years to discover that God already departed you as back. Praise the Lord. And so that's when you rise up again and wonder like, okay, now where am I? seeing that there is now emptiness there is a dryness in whatever you are doing it has now become a duty you are doing it just to fulfill a duty praise the lord so it is important that we take note of the aware and we let's be aware of the presence of god and it will only take a committed person a person who is sensitive to the move of the spirit of god praise the lord to the move of the presence of God. Hallelujah. Let's read the Psalms chapter 42. Psalms chapter 42. Hallelujah. But maybe before Psalms chapter 42, let's uh, look at... Uh, Let's look at Luke, Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10 shows us of a certain character. Two people were doing two things. One was serving. That was Martha. Luke chapter, Luke chapter 10 in verse 38. Luke chapter 10 in verse 38 from verse 38 the Bible says that uh, two people were ministering unto the Lord one was uh, serving and the other was seated at the feet of the Lord Jesus and then the, this mother comes unto the Lord and cries and says that bid Mary my sister that she may come and help me 
And then Jesus looks at Martha and says that, Martha, Martha, you are wearing yourself with so many things that are not important. But this one thing that your sister has chosen to do is to dwell in the presence. Praise the Lord is to dwell in the presence as i've said that god does not disqualify us for failure to yield to him publicly but for failure to yield to him privately for failure to engage him in the secret place praise the lord for failure to engage him in the secret place and the bible says in the book of revelations chapter 2 from verse 1 he talks of a church that was that looked so perfect praise the lord he talks of a church that looked so perfect. They were doing all things right. But he says, this one thing I have against you. And he says that you have neglected your first love. You have neglected the presence. And he says, depart. He says that, uh, that uh, return, repent and turn back to your first love. Lest I will spit you out. And I will blow off your candlestands. And the candlestands, these are your ministries. These are whatever you are doing. So that means that whatever fuels, whatever supports whatever you are doing is the presence of God. And once you neglect it, whether you are preaching, whether you are doing ministry perfectly, praise the Lord, whether your church is growing, as long as the, the candle, uh, as long as what, what sustains the candle is still off, is disconnected, then the ministry is nothing. Praise the Lord. Because if you look at the church of Ephesus, the Bible says in the book of uh, Revelations, Revelations chapter 2, Revelations chapter 2, and uh, from verse 1, the Bible says, unto the, church of, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, write these things, says he that holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou cannot bear them which are evil and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and has found them liars and has borne and has patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted nevertheless have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love remember therefore from whence thou hast fallen and repent and do the first works or else i will come unto the unto thee quickly and i will remove thy candlesticks out of thy place except thou repent praise the lord this this was a perfect church this was a church that was working in holiness and righteousness this was a church that discerned even those that call themselves apostles and yet they were not so perfect in its own way but the lord says this one thing i have against you return to your first love praise the lord return to the presence hallelujah and so many times we have disconnected just because we thought we are doing things just because we thought we are moving and then we lost touch of the presence we lost touch of a secret place praise the lord hallelujah and now the bible says in a in a in a in the book of Psalms, praise the Lord, Psalms chapter 42. If you look at Psalms chapter 42 and verse, from verse 1, here the Bible talks of a man that had detached himself because uh, the title is uh, Seeking the Presence of God. Praise the Lord. We look at a man who had detached himself and lost touch with the presence. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 42, uh, from verse 1, it says that as the, the heart pants after the water brooks so pants my soul after thee O god my soul thirsts for god for the living god when shall i come and appear before god my tears have been my meat day and night while they continually say unto me where is thy god when i remember these things i pour out my soul in me for i had gone with the multitudes I had went with them to the house of God with a voice of joy and praise with the multitudes that kept holiday. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted inside of me? And then he says that hope ye, hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the, the help of, of his countenance. O my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and of the Hamonites and from the hill Mizar. Praise the Lord. Now here we look at a typical example of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of a man that had lost touch with the presence of God. 
Praise the Lord. Remember this year the Lord has told us that uh, his presence shall go with us. But it is very possible to walk with the presence at first and then lose the presence of God. And then lose the touch, that touch with God. Praise the Lord. And so here he is. The Bible says, as the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul after thee, O God. Praise the Lord. And then he goes on to say in verse, in verse 4, he says that my soul, my he says that my tears have been, my, verse 3, my tears have been my meat day and night while they continually say unto me, where is thy God? Because one thing you need to understand is that uh, without the presence of God, we are like just monuments. We are empty. Without the presence of God, you are going to struggle. You are going to face hardship. Yesterday we looked at Exodus chapter 33 and verse 14. The Lord said that my presence shall go with you and I shall give you rest. Praise the Lord. Meaning that uh, an evidence of a lack of the presence of God is that you're going to be struggling. Praise the Lord. The evidence of the presence of God is that you have rest in whatever you do. Much as you might be walking in uh, difficult times, much as you might be facing challenges, but as long as the presence of God is, this is a secret that I want to give you that because uh, uh, most of the times we are going to face challenges. But whether you are going to succeed in that challenge, whether you're going to conquer, is whether is is if you have discerned where the presence of God is. So whenever we find ourselves in challenges, one thing you need to have, to be sensitive of, one thing you need to be aware of, is where is the presence of God in this situation? Praise the Lord. As long as you have discovered that, as long as you have found the presence of God in whatever situation, then the burden is going to be light. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so the psalmist here is asking that my tears have been my meat day and night while they continually say unto me, where is thy God? These are situations asking him, where is your God? Praise the Lord. Where is thy God? And then he goes on to say that when I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. For I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God. Imagine, here you are in the presence of God. Here you are in a service and people are singing, people are worshipping. You see even others doing what? Uh, falling under the anointing. But for you, you, all you feel is just dryness and emptiness. And you're asking, where is God? Praise the Lord. Where is God? You feel like your soul is thirsty. This is what the psalmist says, as the deer pants for the water brooks. Why does even the deer pant for the water brooks? Why does he use this metaphor of a deer? Because uh, the deer is uh, one animal that, uh, first of all, it is smelly. Praise the Lord. It is very smelly. You can sense its scent like uh, even a hundred meters from here. Before even seeing it, you will sense that it is here. Praise the Lord. And then why does it pant for the water box? Because it knows, number one, that once it finds water and it dips itself in the water, the enemy cannot find it. Praise the Lord. The enemy cannot find it. Number two is that uh, its horns, once it takes the water, its horn is exalted. Its horn grows stronger, meaning that it can defend itself against the enemy. Praise the Lord. It can defend itself against the enemy. Number one, once its scent is lost, it has dipped itself in water. Its scent is lost. Praise the Lord. And once its scent is lost, the enemy cannot find it. The enemy cannot locate it. Praise the Lord. And so what am I saying here? That the only safest place that we have as believers is in the presence of God. Praise the Lord. The safest place that we have we as believers is in the presence of God. Out of the presence of God is bondage. Out of the presence of God, you are going to be hit by the enemy. And this is where the enemy wants us. He will make us busy with life, life challenges. He will make us busy seeking for what is not lost. You see believers running up and down and neglect the place of their safety. 
I neglect the secret place. That's what the psalmist says in the Psalms chapter 91. He says that he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. And you go on to see the benefits of the people that abide. An average believer is so much interested in things, in the benefits of a secret place. But how many people are willing to pay the price of abiding? Praise the Lord. How many people are willing to stay in uh, what Pastor Robert called the Eden, the presence of God? Praise the Lord. And so, because the enemy knows that once you are abiding in the presence, then you're going to be safe from all his attacks. He will make you busy. He will make you busy seeking for things that are not lost. He will make you busy seeking for things that do not even make any... Because as long as you're in the presence of God, one thing I want to let you know is that uh, God can... The, the blessings of abiding in the presence of God. I remember some time ago, I shared the story of uh, a great man of God. May God bless his soul, D.L. Modi. History has it that uh, this man here was a man of the presence. Like uh, he was, uh, he was uh, a church boy. And this man was consistently in the presence of God, uh, studying, learning the ways of God, and then praying. A time reached whereby God blessed him so much that he himself started praying and saying that, God, please take away these things here. Stop blessing me. The Lord said, just because you've honored me in the secret place, I'm going to honor you and I'm going to elevate you. God blessed him. God anointed him so heavily that most of his revival meetings they were just characterized with that word, the healing praise the lord the raising of dead so many people were raising up from the dead so many people were being healed he was just talking casually and then people were just flying out of wheelchairs praise the lord that was the impact of the presence of god and so we are in a generation whereby we like the presence we like the benefits of the secret place but how many people are willing to pay the price the, the, the price praise the lord how many people are willing to seek that very presence praise the lord how many people are willing to pay the price hallelujah and so we see here the psalmist says that i went in the house of the multitudes in, in the house of god with the multitudes those that kept holiday and then he notices that in his heart there is an emptiness there is a void there is a deficiency of the presence of god much much as people were singing praises much as people were worshiping praise the lord and i believe this has happened to each and every one of us whereby you come in service and you feel just dryness you feel an emptiness you feel a void people are singing people are praising even mom comes and does deliverance but for you wondering okay what is happening with me where is god you're seeking for him in the spirit but you cannot touch him praise the lord you cannot feel his presence the psalmist says that why art thou cast down all my soul why are you disquinted inside of me he says hope here in the lord praise the lord hope here in the lord for he is the help of thy countenance hallelujah praise the lord oh my god my soul is cast down within me therefore will i remember thee from the land of jordan and of the harmonites from the hill miza now he was trying to bring back memories of those days of uh, the places where he experienced the very presence of god and uh, it is so painful to have walked in the presence of god at some point because you know what you desire but again you cannot touch it you know what you have ever felt before you know what the presence of god means you have ever walked with him but again you are in a position whereby you cannot feel that what you felt praise the lord because as we start with god there's a way that god you know he brings you closer and then you are walking with him everything seems to be going on well most of the times when you have just given your life to Christ, you will discover that uh, you can sense his presence immediately. Just one, 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 one worship song can trigger you, can take you into deeper places in him. Praise the Lord. 
But you come and just listen to one message. And then you're like, wow, this service here, I was blessed. And then all of a sudden, just because maybe you are busy with life. I'm not saying that we should be focused only on seeking the presence of God. I'm not saying that we should be just in, a, in, a, in, in, a, in our closets. No, I'm just I'm saying that uh, let's be the people of the presence, the people that walk in the presence, because God does not say that he that he visits. The Bible does not say that he that visits. It says that he that dwells in the secret place. Praise the Lord. Dwelling in the secret place does not mean that you should lock yourself in your room and then be there all of it, the whole day, the whole night. No, you will be an unproductive Christian because you have to work. Praise the Lord. You have to work. You have to do other things. But let, because the presence of God, the secret place, it is a place in the spirit. It is not a, 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 like a physical place. That maybe can become an altar or something. Praise the Lord. But the secret place, it is a place. It is a place in God. Whereby whether you are in a, in a, in a, in a, in a multitude of people or you are alone, Praise the Lord. You can even be in a taxi, but you are connected. Praise the Lord. You are connected with God. And God is speaking to you. You are worshipping in your spirit. Praise the Lord. You are worshipping in your spirit. You are not disconnected from Him. Mama has always said it here that it is very possible for you to be maybe even in a window. You can be even in the marketplace. You can be even uh, along the streets. But you are in communion with God. That is now the secret place. Praise the Lord. That is now a man that is dwelling in the secret place. Praise the Lord. And so we see here the psalmist comes before the Lord and then he had lost the presence. Praise the Lord. He had lost the presence. Now then, quickly, how do we, how do we seek for what we have lost? How do we seek for what we have lost? Praise the Lord. How do we seek for what we have lost? The Bible says in Hosea chapter 6 and verse 3, Then shall you know if you follow on to know the Lord. Praise the Lord. Then shall you know if we follow on to know the Lord. Hosea chapter 6 and verse 3. Praise the Lord. You see, as I was explaining that most of the times when you have just given our lives to Christ, uh, we tend to be walking with God. You are having communion with God. You are having fellowship with Him. And everything seems to be moving on right. But then you plateau at a dimension whereby you become comfortable with your walk with God. Just because you are having results. I think this is what I was explaining yesterday that it is very possible to start. You can desire gifts and uh, because of your commitment with God, because of your diligence in the place of prayer, God can put a dimension of that gift on you. Praise the Lord. But a time can come when you grow in that gift and you start operating in that gift at will. Meaning that whether you have prayed or not, you will operate in the gift. Whether you are seeking God or not, the gift will be working. Praise the Lord. And that is the point whereby most of us become so reluctant just because you are having results, just because you have mastered the art of prayer, just because you know what to do. Praise the Lord. You know what to do. You just go sing one song and then all of a sudden uh, you, you are connected and then you start doing what? You start uh, maybe preaching, you start ministering and uh, you see the sick being healed, the lame walking. That now you have grown in the gift of faith. Praise the Lord. You reach a point whereby you relax on seeking God. Praise the Lord. You relax on seeking God. And what happens is that, uh, as I say, that uh, God can announce his what? His arrival, but he does not announce his departure. Praise the Lord. Because you will be walking with God and then you reach a point whereby you are comfortable. And uh, you are confused with your surrounding, with the results that you are having. What happens is that God shifts and just because you are blinded by what you are doing, you are blinded by the gifts, the giftings. God shifts and then he leaves you. Praise the Lord. He leaves you where you are and his presence departs. And for you just because you are confused with whatever is going on around you, 
you lose touch with his presence the bible has said that then shall we know you cannot know god in his depth except you do what hosea chapter 6 and verse 3 tells us then shall you know if you follow on to know the lord then shall you grow in his presence if you keep on following otherwise the day you miss praise the lord once you miss his touch it is going to be difficult for you i believe this is where this is a point whereby now false prophets these people operating with strange powers come from because they know what they lost they be in a position of the psalmist in psalms chapter 42 he says that why art thou cast down all my soul why are you disquainted inside of me I will yet praise the Lord for the help of his countenance, for, for his, the help of my count, of his countenance. Praise the Lord. And then he says that I'll remember you in the hill Miza, the harmonize, the Jordan. Praise the Lord. These were the places of his presence. So once they remember, these false prophets here, these people operating with strange powers, once they remember what they once had, and they now can't touch it, because once God moves, just one steps here. Praise the Lord. It can take you even a week. It can take you months. It can take you years to regain back what you lost. And just because people cannot pay that price to continually seek him. The story of uh, Catherine Kuhlman, I believe most of you know it, whereby uh, she was engaged with uh, uh, a married man and then uh, she got married to this man here. She was walking in the healing anointing. She was walking in, uh, in, in, in the gifts of the Spirit. She was carrying the presence of God. Praise the Lord. But now she plateaued that dimension whereby uh, she lost her awareness of God. Even when God was rebuking her, she could not listen to him. Why? Because she was in love with this married man. And then what happens is that the Lord departs from her. And then all of a sudden she messes up. Sometimes when God wants to awaken someone who has lost his presence, is that that person will have to hit a dead end. Praise the Lord. In a way of God showing you mercy, he will make sure that you hit a dead end and then you rise up and say, okay, where am I now? Story has it that uh, after, uh, like after getting married to this man, she, now, she was now criticized heavily and even all the ministers were castigating her and uh, no one invited her. Then she separated herself. Praise the Lord. I was listening to some, uh, there's some man who talks about those stories there. And he says that uh, it took her about six months of closing herself in the closet, alone with God, crying unto the Lord, asking for mercy. Six months. Do you know what six months means? Seeking for the Lord live alone here whereby we are seeking we are seeking the lord and then uh, we are all in public praise the lord you are ministering you are doing what no this one here isolated herself it was her with god she said whether i die let me die here praise the lord and she had to pay that price to start regaining the presence of god and what happens is that the good thing god showed her mercy and when she came back the grace upon her life would doubled the one that she was operating in before praise the lord so it is for my thinking it's much better if we are walking with him it is much better if we are maintaining that fellowship otherwise the price for regaining the connection it is very heavy and this is why many have fallen off just because they cannot feel what they used to feel Many have given up on Christianity. Many have said, I think, no, I can't. This is not for me. They go and look for shortcuts of life. Praise the Lord. So then how are we seeking the presence of God? How do we seek the presence of God? Uh, Psalms, Psalms 63. Psalm 63 from verse 1. The Bible says, O oh, oh God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsts for thee. My flesh longs for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is to see thy power 
and thy glory so as i have seen in the in in that sanctuary because thy loving kindness is better than life my lips shall praise thee thus will i bless thee while i live i will lift up my hands in thy name my soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips praise the lord he starts off by saying that O oh lord O oh god thou art my god O oh god thou art my god early will i seek thee my soul thirsts for thee my flesh longs for thee in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water now that is a position whereby there is a deficiency of the presence of god praise the lord but uh, the psalmist shows us that he is hopeful that once he has gotten the presence of god his soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and his lips shall praise god praise the lord he says early will i seek thee praise the lord early will i seek thee meaning that you have to pay a price of seeking the lord praise the lord you have to pay a price of seeking the lord for the bible says that he that seeks shall find and seeking is not just a one day thing or day two day thing if you are seeking it is going to take you time it is going to take you commitment it is going to take you diligence praise the lord it is going to take you much effort for you to find whatever you are seeking for and remember we are dealing with a god who loves to hide himself and as long as he has given you something and then you take it for granted then you will have to pay a price for it ask moses after giving him the ten commandments he came and expressed his anger what happened is that okay now you're going to do it yourself get a stone and then you're going to write these commandments most of the times that what that's what he does once he has given you his presence he has drawn you and then you take it for granted the next time <laughs> you will have to pay the price praise the lord you have to pay the price now psalms chapter 62 and verse 1 psalm chapter 62 and verse 1 it says that truly my soul waits upon god from him cometh my salvation truly my soul waits upon god for him from him comes my salvation total salvation the salvation of believers is when the presence of god is there in its fullness praise the lord when god is there in his fullness that's when we are we are saved that's when we are delivered praise the lord total salvation comes when 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 he is there in his fullness praise the lord and if you're going to wait for his salvation then you will have to wait praise the lord you'll have to pay the price of waiting and when you are waiting you do not know when he's going to come praise the lord you do not know when he's going to come and you do not you have to wait and walk according to his commandments walk according to his dictates because okay let's take a look at let's study these waiters here what does the waiter come the waiter is not going to come and serve you whatever you want uh, whatever he wants praise the lord the waiter will come and then stand and wait for you to do to make your order you can decide to say no i'm not taking anything you can decide to say that wait praise the lord i'll call you you can decide to wait and maybe the waiter can come with a variety of things and then you say no i just want water praise the lord so if we are going to seek for the presence number one we have to do what we, we have to do what the psalmist says truly my soul waits upon the lord number number one was seeking the presence of god praise the lord early will i seek thee to see thy power and thy glory praise the lord that is psalms chapter 61 63 and verse 1 number two is that you have to wait praise the lord in the seeking you will have to wait and walk according to his dictates you will have to wait and you have to wait for him to quicken you praise the lord because the bible says in the book of john john chapter john chapter 6 and verse 63 the bible says that it is the spirit that quickens the flesh profits nothing once you have lost the presence of god that's why i said yesterday that uh, 
that are that are walking in the presence of God I mean seeking the presence of God may not necessarily mean you dipping your head in the Bible and then you praying from morning till evening praise the Lord it might not necessarily mean that and a person that carries the presence of God is not the person that yes these all are channels that bring us to the presence of God but do you know that some people that are reading the Bible from morning to evening and end up mad praise the Lord that some people do you know that even these are uh, because if you look at most of these uh, writers here the Socrates uh, the, 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 all these men great men that are writing books do you know that these people here read the Bible uh, praise the Lord they read the Bible most of their quotes are from the Bible most of their principles are from the Bible but how comes they're not saved how comes they're not working with the presence of God do you know that in the shrines the Bible is there the people that are using the Bible but how comes they're not impacted with the presence of God so it is not necessarily you reading the Bible praise the Lord because even meditation alone can bring you closer to God James Wayne is going to just demand for worship. The Lord, the times whereby is just going to demand for. you're wasting time praise the lord it will take you 20 minutes cover that token now i think i should do something else and you'll find yourself deviated to something else but once once you start moving with the strength of the spirit you discover that he brings you to a place now where the flesh gives way praise the lord where the flesh gives way and it's now the spirit of god driving you you reach to that place of uh, isaiah chapter 40 Isaiah chapter 40 the Bible says that those that wait upon the Lord but uh, because uh, why why then why should we wait praise the Lord why should we wait Psalms chapter Psalms chapter 39 before Isaiah Psalms chapter 39 in verse 7 Psalms chapter 39 from verse 7 and it says that now O Lord what wait I for why do you wait praise the Lord and now Lord what wait I for my hope is in thee deliver me from all my transgressions make me not the reproach of the foolish praise the Lord we wait that the Lord delivers us praise the Lord that he breaks off the flesh whatever had uh, taken your attention whatever had weighed you down when the Lord was moving when the presence of God was departing from you it is in the waiting process that all these things are cut off praise the Lord it is in that place of waiting that now the flesh gives way it is in that place of waiting that whatever had put you down now gives way praise the Lord now you are not operating with the strength of the flesh you are surrendering now praise the lord you are now surrendering in the waiting process hallelujah now isaiah chapter 40 isaiah chapter 40 and verse uh, isaiah chapter 40 from verse 
let's start from 30. It says that even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Praise the Lord. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Hallelujah. Now, if we study the, weak, the ego, praise the Lord. If we study the ego, the Bible says that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. It is in the waiting process, as I've said. Praise the Lord. It is in the waiting process, in, uh, according to Isaiah, uh, Psalms chapter 39 from verse 7, that uh, he delivers us from our transgressions. Praise the Lord. He delivers us from those things that weigh us down. And now once he has delivered us from those things that weigh us down, he says they shall mount up with wings as eagles. Because you cannot mount up with heaviness. You cannot mount up with the baggage on you. Praise the Lord. And, as, and, and when, once they have mounted up with wings as eagles, he says they shall run and not be weary. Why do they run? You run to catch up with what you lost. Praise the Lord. You run to catch up with what you had lost in the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. And once you have caught up with what you have lost in the realm of the spirit, then you begin to walk. Now you are walking with the presence. You are walking in communion with him. You are having a perfect fellowship with him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And uh, once you have caught up with him, you have caught up with the presence. It is very important that you maintain it. You maintain the fellowship. Praise the Lord. Otherwise, the price you are going to pay, because uh, as I've said that uh, this God here, when you are working with him, means just one day. Just one day is enough. Like you go back two steps. You make one step and then you miss one day. You go back two steps behind. And once you've gone back two steps behind, then uh, it is very possible to lose his presence. Praise the Lord. The Bible says that then shall they follow if they if, then shall we know. That is what that was uh, Hosea chapter what? Chapter 6 and verse 3. It says that then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's why we need to walk now continuously. To walk in communion, to walk in fellowship. Praise the Lord. Otherwise, lose just one step. Lose just one day. Miss it. And then see the price that you will pay to recover whatever you lost. It becomes heavy. Praise the Lord. It becomes heavy. It becomes painful. Sometimes. Sometimes others even never reach again. Never regain the presence. Praise the Lord. Others never regain the presence. And that's why as I've said that many people have uh, branched off from that junction there whereby they've lost it because of their daily endeavors, because of whatever they've been doing daily. And now, just because they cannot pay the price, they look for shortcuts. They look for ways of uh, trying to fill up that void. Praise the Lord. Others even give up and they say, uh -uh. And the that's when agitation comes in that's when frustration comes in because in his presence he says that I shall give you rest once the rest has gone just know that you have lost touch with the presence praise the Lord you have lost touch with the presence and so it will take you time to seek it it will take you time to regain it it will take you a higher sacrifice praise the Lord Hallelujah. I believe we have been blessed uh, for these remaining few minutes. I don't know. Can we use about 30 minutes? Praise the Lord. 30 or 15 minutes and then uh, we cry unto the Lord. Praise the Lord. We cry unto the Lord and ask him wherever we missed it. Wherever we lost it. That's why it is important. These gatherings here. We may take them for granted and think that uh, I know maybe maybe prophetess just wants people to be busy at church. No, it's not about being busy. Ask the people that 
are not gathering ask them how are they feeling praise the lord there is that funny feeling they have but uh they cannot explain it and uh, unfortunately some do not know what to do about it because with spiritual things it is not about you doing the thing it is about having an understanding the bible says there is one that has prophecy but does not know the way that takes him into the city praise the lord does not know the way that takes him into the city so there's some people that actually that in that position whereby they feel there is something missing they feel like there is a void in their spirits they feel that thirst that the psalmist was feeling in psalm chapter 42 but they do not know what to do about it praise the lord they do not know what to do about it they do not know where to start from and so all of a sudden they will be like they'll start looking for things that kind of fill up the void things that according to them they think that they will satisfy them but there is nothing that satisfies like the presence of God there is nothing that can fill up the void that the presence of God has made ask Saul a king praise the Lord a king who had influence and affluence very wealthy but when the presence of God departed from him, the Bible says he went on searching for the people that he had killed, the witches, trying to fill up that void, and says, call for me, so, call for me Samuel. And even when Samuel showed up, when the, when the spirit of Samuel showed up, this guy, there's nothing that could satisfy. That's why David cried and he said that, take not away your spirit, do not cast me from your presence and do not take away your spirit from me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So it is important that we maintain, we do whatever is possible, that uh, you maintain the presence of God. Otherwise, once it has gone, then it is going to be disaster for you. Praise the Lord. And maybe some of us, maybe at one, one way or the other, maybe even it was just a day and uh, you feel now whatever you used to feel, it is no longer there. Maybe time, there's a time that you used to fast and there was that kind of peace that you were walking in. There is that presence that you were walking in. There is that glory that you were walking in. And in one way or the other, maybe we lost it. We lost touch of it. Praise the Lord. I know the God who restores. I know the God who shows mercy. Hallelujah. And he will show us mercy tonight. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I will run to you, to your word of truth, not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of God. Yes, I will run the race till I see your face. Lord, let me live in the glory of your grace. Your eyes is on the sparrow, your hand it comforts me, may your prayers, may you draw all men, and your mercies and truth be seen. understand may your glory may you draw all men and your masses and love be seen and I will run to you to your word Not by power, but by the 
and begin to worship him this evening glorify his holy name worship him in the mighty name of jesus remember worship is one of the things that drew us into his presence worship is one of the things that bring us closer to him it is one of the things that lift off our burdens it is one of the things that acknowledge his mightiness his glory his tenderness his loving kindness worship him tonight in the mighty name of jesus father lord we worship you lord we give you praise your god we exalt you our father lord we glorify your holy name we give you praise your god we give you reverence your god this evening in the mighty name of jesus we exalt you O lord my god the great and mighty god the ruler of the heavens and the earth indescribable god the ruler of the heavens and the earth. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our glory, your God. You are worthy of all the honor. You are worthy of all the adoration. In the mighty name of Jesus, we bless your holy name. Almighty God, you are holy, your God. You are loving, you are wonderful, our Father. You are glorious. You are wonderful, O God. A mighty warrior, o Lord Almighty, who was and is and is to come, O God. We bless your holy name, O God, we exalt you, Abba Father. We pour our love upon you, O Lord my God. We pour our love upon you, O God, like oil upon your feet, O God, like wine for you to drink, O Lord, like water from our hearts, O God. Father Lord, we lay our love upon you, O God. We pour our love upon your feet, O God, like the woman, O God. The Bible says, O God, she came, O God. She came with an expensive ointment, O God, and poured it upon your feet, O God, and broke the alabaster flask, O God, at your feet, O my God. Tonight, O Lord, my God, Father, we break our flasks, O God, we break our flasks of ointment, O God, upon your feet, O Lord, my God, and worship you, O God. We worship you tonight, O God. We worship your holiness, O God. We worship you, O God, tonight, in the mighty name of Jesus. 
we worship your majesty your god we worship you king of zion oh god we worship you the ruler of the heavens and the earth we join the 24 elders oh god and we join the living creatures oh lord my god to worship at your feet oh god in the mighty name of jesus a god almighty the ascent of days oh god the ruler of the heavens and the earth oh god we exalt you tonight oh god we give you reverence oh lord my god and we bow before you are the father lord we bow before your feet, O Lord, my God. We bow before you tonight, O God. And acknowledge your Lordship, O God. And acknowledge your holiness, O God. We acknowledge your God, your mightiness, O God. We acknowledge your God, your tender, loving, O God. We acknowledge your mercies, O Lord, my God. We acknowledge your God, your supremacy, O God. Over our lives, O God. Over all creation. Over everything created, O God. In heavens and the earth. And even under the earth, O Lord, my God. For you alone are God, and there is none like you, O God. You are God before time began, O God. You are God before creation, O God. And you are still God even today. That's why the Bible says, O God, you are God all by yourself, O God. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You never change, O God. You are the same, O God. You are the God that was never elected, O God. You are the God that was never put in position, O God. You are the God self existent to God, the Holy One of Israel, O God, the one who has and is and is to come, O God, and to you alone be the praise, and to you alone be all the honor, and to you be all the adoration, O God, indescribable God, uncontainable God, the one that from the stars and you know them by name, the one that from the regencies, O God, the one that created the smoky mountains, O God. The one that created the heavens and the earth, O oh God, I'll be all the praise and all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we worship you, O oh God. We adore you, mighty ruler. We adore you, the voice of many waters. We adore you, the Lord, so merciful and kind. We exalt your holy name, O oh God. We give you reverence, O oh Lord, my God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And tonight we come, O oh God, with thanksgiving, O oh Lord, my God. The psalmist says, that I will enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise, O God. Tonight, our Father Lord, oh, we come into your presence, O God, with thanksgiving in our hearts, O God. We come into your presence, O God, with thanksgiving, O Lord, my God. We thank you for the blessedness of your presence. We thank you, O Lord, my God, for Lord in your relief, O God. We move and have our being, O God. We thank you for your presence, O God. For Lord, it is because of your presence that we can we are able my Lord God it is because of your presence of God that we can stand the God it is because of your presence of God that Father Lord we can live it is because of your presence of God that Father Lord we stand the God tonight we thank you our God for the blessedness of your presence we thank you oh Lord my God for it is because of your presence of God Father that we are healthy your God it is because of your presence of God Father Lord that we can walk oh God even in the supernatural, oh God, it is because of your grace, oh God, and your presence, oh Lord, my God, that we can still pray, oh God. It is because of your presence, oh God, that we have access, oh God. Thank you, oh Lord, my God. Thank you, loving Father. Thank you for your presence, O oh God. We thank you for your presence, O oh God. Even in this place, O oh Lord, my God. We know that you are here, O oh God. And we know, O oh Lord, my God, that we are safe, O oh God, because of your presence. It is because of your presence that we are preserved. It is because of your presence that we can walk. It is because of your presence, O oh God, that we can live. It is because of your presence, O oh Lord, my God. The Father, Lord, that we are even relevant, O oh God. It is because of your presence, O oh God, that we can even minister, O oh God. It is because of your presence, O oh Lord, my God. Father, where would we be, O oh God, if it was not, O oh God, for your presence, O oh God, if it was not for your mercies, O oh God, where would we be, O oh Lord, my God, if you left us, O oh Lord, my God, where would we be, O oh Lord, my God, if you neglected us, O oh Lord, my God. Father, because even in your fallen states, Father, Lord, you have drawn us closer to you, even in our fallen states, O oh God. Father Lord, you have been merciful. Father, we say thank you, O God. 
Thank you, Abba Father, for your mercies. Thank you for your grace, O God. Thank you for your mercies, O God. We bless your holy name, O God. We thank you, O Lord, my God, for grace, O Lord, my God. We thank you, Abba Father, for wisdom and strength. We thank you, O Lord, my God, for sustaining us, O God, in your presence, O God. You have sustained us, O God. You have preserved us, O God, even from the wicked one, O God. For Lord, if it were not on you, O God, if it were not you on our side, the enemy would have swallowed us. The enemy would have crushed us. The enemy would have destroyed us. But you have helped us, O God, in your presence, O Lord, my God. You have preserved us, O God. You have fought our battles, O God. You have preserved us, O Father. You have covered us, O Lord, my God. You have hidden us, O Lord, my God, in the shadow of your presence, O God. The psalmist said, one thing have I desired, and that will I seek for, and that is to dwell in the presence of the Lord. And Father Lord, when he sinned, the Bible says, he said, cast me not away from your presence, for the greatest curse of humanity is the deficiency, is the absence of your presence, O God. When man sinned, O God, and you banished him out of your presence, the Bible shows us, O God, that he became deficient, he became deficient, O God, and he became impotent, O God. Oh my God, we have learned, O God, that the greatest curse of humanity, O God, is the absence of your presence. And tonight, oh my God, we return to you, Abba Father, we return to you as the psalmist. Oh, the Bible says, oh God, the Bible says, oh Lord, my God, when he discovered that he had sinned, when he discovered, oh Lord, my God, that he had sinned against you, he returned unto you, oh God, and he said, have mercy upon me, oh God, have mercy upon me, oh Lord, according to your loving kindness. He says, blot out my transgressions, for I recognize my sins, I recognize from where I have fallen, I recognize where I have fallen, oh God, tonight. Night, Abba, Father Lord, like the psalmist we come unto you. For Lord, you desire truth, O God, in the in one man, O God. You say, O God, a broken spirit, O God, and a contrite heart. Thou shalt not despise it, O God. Tonight we return to you, O God. We run to you, O Lord, my God. With broken spirits, O God. We return to you, O Lord, my God. We recognize, O God, wherever we have fallen, O God. Some of us, Abba, Father Lord, lost your presence. So oh God, in this ways of living, oh God, some of us, so oh Lord, my God, lost your presence, so oh Lord, my God, oh Father Lord, and being busy with what we thought, oh God, was life, oh Lord, my God, and yet, oh God, it does not live to life, oh God, tonight we return to you, oh tonight we return to you, oh God, tonight we return to you, oh God, you say it in your word, in Nehemiah chapter one, oh God, that if my people, if my people sin against me, I will scatter them to the further ends of the earth. I will banish them away from my presence. And but when they return unto me, you say you shall reconcile, O God, with him. They shall be your people, O God. And they shall be their God. And tonight, O Lord, my God, we return to your face, O God. We return to seek your face. We return to the place of your presence. And Father Lord, we ask for mercy, O God. Wherever we lost it, O God. Wherever we lost touch with your presence. Wherever, wherever we lost, O God, commitment in the secret place, O God. And we return tonight, O God. We return tonight, O God. Have mercy upon us, O God. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. Have mercy upon us, O God. Forgive us for our foolishness. Forgive us, O God, for our recklessness, O God. Forgive us for our pride. Oh God, we thought, oh God, we could save ourselves. Lord, you what tells me, oh God, in Isaiah 30 and verse 6, 15, oh God, you say your salvation requires you returning unto me and stop your silly ways of trying to save yourself. You say it in quietness and trust in your presence, oh God. Shall we find rest, oh God? The very thing we are unwilling to do tonight, oh Lord, my God, for the Lord, we have realized, oh God, 
we have known where we have fallen. We have realized the Lord my God. For the Lord the burden of God. Of losing your presence of God. And tonight we have chosen to return unto you. The Lord is a to that say that if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and turn away from their wicked ways then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. Tonight oh Lord my God we are the people called by your name. We are the sheep of your pasture. Father Lord tonight we return. Oh we return unto you O God. We return unto you Abba Father. Have mercy upon us O God. Have mercy upon us O God. And reconcile us O God. From wherever we have fallen. Wherever we have missed it O God. We ask for a reconciliation. We ask O God that you may restore us O God. Like the prodigal son, O oh God, Father, we return to our Father. We return to our Maker, O oh God. We return unto you, O oh God. We return to seeking your face, O oh God. We return, Father Lord, into your presence, O oh God. Oh, Father Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O oh God. And restore us, O oh God. Restore us, O oh Lord, my God. Restore us, O oh Lord, my God. Quicken us by your Spirit, O oh God. Quicken us. Oh God, and we shall call upon your name. Oh, we can ask by your spirit, oh God, for you have said in John 6 in verse 63, oh God, that it is the spirit that quickens the flesh profits nothing, oh God. Father, our activities cannot help us. Lord, our own ways of saving ourselves cannot help us, oh God. Father, Lord, we cannot help ourselves, oh Lord. Help us, oh Lord, my God. Help us our infirmities, oh God. Help our infirmities, oh God. Help power limitations the Lord for no one comes to the Father no one can walk in the presence except he be drawn by you O God help us O Lord my God and quicken us O God quicken us O Lord my God and we shall call upon your name O God oh the psalmist says in Psalm chapter 80 quicken us O God won't you quicken us O Lord my God that we may call upon your name oh won't you quicken us O God that we may come and dwell in your presence Oh, the psalmist says, one thing have I desired, and that will I seek for her, is to dwell in your presence, oh God. Tonight, oh Lord, my God, Father, our hearts, oh God, pants for you. Our souls are longing for you, oh God. In a dry and pasty land, oh God, where there is no water, oh God. And we ask of you, my God, that quicken us, oh Lord, my God. Quicken us, oh Lord, my God. When shall you quicken us, oh God? When shall you lift off the burdens? When shall you lift off for God the burdens and deliver us from our transgressions like the psalmist praise of God in Psalms 39 oh God in verse 7 it says surely my soul longs for you oh God I wait for you oh God quicken them oh God and deliver me oh God and deliver us from our transgressions I deliver us from our disalignment, O oh God. I deliver us from our disalignment, O oh God. Wherever, Father, we have lost touch with you, O oh God. Wherever we have lost alignment with you, Father, we ask, O oh God, for a reconciliation. We ask for a revival, O oh God. We ask for a restoration, O oh God. Restore us, O oh God, to our place in you. Restore us, O oh God, to our position in you. Restore us, O oh Lord, my God. Surely our souls wait for you, O oh God. In a dry and thirsty land, O oh God. But we, like the psalmist, O oh God, we are hopeful, O oh God, that for the Lord, once we have gotten in touch with you, once we have gotten in touch with you, O oh God, Father, our souls oh God, shall be satisfied. Oh, our souls shall be satisfied, O oh God, as with marrow, O oh God. And our lips, O oh God, shall erupt. I will praise the Lord, my God, for the help of your countenance, O oh God. For you are merciful and kind. We know you are, you shall restore us, O God. And because you are gracious and loving, and because you are merciful and kind, we know that you shall restore us, O God. We know that you will restore our your presence, O God. In our lives, Abba Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, our hope is in you, O God. Our trust is in you, my God. Let us not be put to shame, O God. And may we not become the reproach of unbelievers. 
upon so God. Those that ask us, where is thy God? Because we have lost your presence. Because we have lost your presence, so God. Father, we ask, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my Lord, help us, oh God. Help our infirmities. Help our limitations, oh God. And restore us, oh God. Restore the first love, oh God. Restore our blessing, you, oh God. Restore our place in you, my God. Restore us, O Lord, my God. Restore us back to that place, O God. Restore us back to that place, O God. Where we walked with you, my God. Where we experienced you, O God. Ah, when we remember the Jordan, O God. When we remember the Misa, O God. The Hill Misa, O God. The Hammerite soul, O my God. When we remember those places of your presence, O God. Father Lord, my God. Father Lord, we discover that we have lost so much. And tonight, O God, we return. Tonight, we return unto you Lord because of your loving kindness oh God we know that you are able to restore we know that you are able to restore us oh God and we know that you will restore us oh God tonight have mercy upon us Lord have mercy upon us oh God have mercy upon us oh my God have mercy upon us, O God. Father, we cry unto you tonight, O God. Lord, look upon us with mercy, O Lord. Look upon us with mercy, O God. And in your loving kindness, O Father. Father, restore us, O God. Restore us, O God. To the place of your presence, O God. To that experience that we had in the days of the old. Father, restore us, O Lord, my God. Restore us, O Lord, my God. Oh my God, restore us, O God. Restore us tonight, O God. Restore your presence, O God. Wherever we have missed it, O God. Wherever we have missed it, O God. As in the days of Moses, O God. As in the days of the early church, O God. Restore your presence, O God, in the church. Restore your presence, O God, in the body. Father, we are tired of operating on the outside. We are tired of operating on the empty. We are tired of speaking empty words, oh God. Father, restore us, oh God, to that place, oh Lord, my God, where your monuments are turned, oh God, into powerful movements, oh God. We are tired of speaking of revival, and yet we cannot shake, oh God, the grounds. We are tired of speaking of revival, Lord, and yet we cannot bring impact in our surroundings. Oh, restore us, O God. Father, no, Makarabayata. Renebo Sikayan de Limaraina Tosada. Le Kambanato Ribaina Tosikaba. Karabayan de Limande Kofelina Ratayada. Restore your presence, O God. For it is in your presence, O God. It is by your presence, O God. And will that we are able to stand. It is by your presence, O Lord, my God, that monuments can be turned into powerful movements. It is by your presence, O Lord, my God, that weak vessels, O Lord, my God, Father, can stand and speak to thousands, O God, and their hearts are pricked, O God. It is by your presence, O Lord, my God, that, O God, we can communicate even the most holy emotions, O God, that we can stir up the most holy motions and turn over oh my God our witches of God into ministers of God of Christ it is by your presence oh Lord my God that drunk the drunkards, oh Lord my God, can ask what shall we do to be saved? It is by your presence, oh Lord my God, that sinners, oh Lord my God, that even witches can ask, what can I do to have that which you have? Oh my God, we need your presence. Lord, we need your presence in this era. We need your presence in our lives, oh God. We need you, oh God. We acknowledge our insufficiencies. We acknowledge our limitations. And we desire more of you. We desire more of you. And less of us, oh God. We desire more of you, oh God. And less of us, oh God. We desire more of you, my Lord. And less of us, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, have your way, oh God. Break our walls down, oh God. Break our walls down, oh God. And Father, reveal yourself, oh God. For you cannot be explained, oh God. 
God. You can only be revealed, oh God. Father, this generation is not waiting for talkers. This generation is not waiting for people that speak English. This way generation is waiting for people that carry your presence. Oh my God, for the sake of the lives of God, for the sake of the destinies that are tied to us, for the sake of God of the ministry that is upon our shoulders, Father, grant us your presence, O God. Grant us your presence, O God. Grant us your presence, Lord. Grant us your presence, Abba Father. Grant us your presence, O God. Swallow up our limitations. Oh, swallow up our insufficiencies, Lord. Swallow up our inadequacies, O God. And Father, reveal your presence, O God. Reveal your presence in our ministrations, Lord. Reveal your presence in our families, Lord. Reveal your presence in our generations, Father. Reveal your presence, O God. Lord, let's disappear and you appear. Less of us and more of you, O God. Less of us and more of you, O God. Less of us and more of you, my God. Less of me, O God, and more of you. Less of me and more of you, O God. A fresh way to God upon our lives. Let your presence be manifested in our lives, O God. We are tired of explaining you, O God. We are tired of speaking about God. We cannot further Lord the reveal. We are tired of explaining a God unto a generation that is so further caught up in wickedness, O God. Father Lord, it is only your presence, O God. It is only your presence, O God, that can make a difference. It is only your presence that can make a difference, Lord. It is only your presence that can make a difference, O oh God. In our lives, in our families, in our ministries, O oh God, in our businesses, O oh God. It is only your presence that can make a difference. Father, give us success, O oh God. A quickness, O oh God, to deeper realms of your presence. To deeper realms of you, O oh God. To deeper realms of your presence, O oh God. May we be ambassadors. May we be carriers, O oh God of your presence oh god father it is in your presence that our transgressions that our weaknesses are swallowed up it is in your presence oh god that our weaknesses oh god who cannot count it is in your presence oh god that father lord oh our limitations our father lord cannot count but it is in your presence oh god my god that weak men, O oh God, are made, made stronger, O oh God. That weak men are made stronger than David, O oh God. Father, Lord, give us success, O oh God. Lord, we plead for your presence, O oh God. We cry for your presence, O oh God. We cry for your presence, O oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, have your way, O oh God. Have your way, my God. Come and take your place, O oh God. Come and be revealed in our lives, O Lord. Be revealed in our ministries. Be revealed, O God. Yes, in our generation, in the body of Christ, O God. In our nation, our Father, Lord. Be revealed in Jesus' mighty name.